So I've been using the same method of sign chaining for years now. Basically, it's just like whether I'm using MIDI or audio for my kicks and snares, I will have this trigger track and then I'll lay down like a C3 in a MIDI clip. And then I will just copy this over to like all of where my snares and kicks hit. And then that will get sent to my sidechain group. And right now it's shaper box, but it used to be, you know, various other things and, and it would just trigger the side chain that way. So recently I've stumbled upon some videos where they talk about ring mod side chaining. And at first I was intrigued and I was like, oh, cool. A more surgical way of side chaining. That's like a little bit less destructive. And then I got to the end of the process and found out that it leaves like distortion in the mix. And then you end up having to side chain it the old way anyways. So I'm not really sure what the point is maybe you guys can tell me in the comments like what I'm missing there like what why why would we do that if we're gonna end up side chaining it the old way anyways regardless this made me kind of think like hey maybe I should look into like the way I'm side chaining and see if maybe I can make it a little bit easier uh, so that's what we're gonna try to do now I'm gonna do my like quick little intro thing and while I'm doing that just hit the like button and subscribe for me because why not <laughs> So my main goal was to get rid of the trigger track. Actually, not get rid of the trigger track. I didn't want to have to constantly edit this trigger track whenever I change my snare and kick. So like I wanted the freedom to change my snare and kick however I want to and not have to worry about making a separate track or editing that track to send it to the side chain. I would rather like not have to think about side chaining at all. So I figured out a few ways to do that. So the first way is uh, MIDI. So I have my MIDI uh, rack here for my kick and snare. And so you would just make a kick and snare MIDI track with a drum rack. I have my kick and my snare here. Okay. And that's what it sounds like. Okay. Very, very basic. This doesn't have anything in here any different than I would do any other time. Uh, but I do have this trigger track. It's set to monitor in. I have the input is my kick and snare track. And then I have it set to post effects. Like I said, I have it monitored in. And then I have the MIDI going out to the side chain group and shaper box, which is right here. This is what's being triggered via MIDI. And so like, bear with me because if you don't have shaper box, that's fine. You don't have to worry about that. There are plenty of other methods. There's duck buddy that's for free, or at least 1.5 is free kickstart. There's, there's a whole bunch of other ones out there. I know that you can do the same thing and some of them are free, but anyways, if you do have shaper box, this is an easy way to do that. So I don't have to do anything to this track. And I don't know why no one really, cause this is very simple. I don't know why anyone didn't just say to do this before. So yeah, the MIDI is getting fed into the trigger track and then it's sending it out to the side chain and it triggers it just fine. So yeah, it, this works. Okay. And then, so I'll set up this just to show you that it does work. Okay. We'll resample all this. Okay. Uh, one thing that I forgot to mention, or I started to mention, and then I I decided not to. This here, this track thing that says keep latency negative 10 milliseconds. Um, so the way you find this is you go up to view and then you go down here to arrangement track controls and then select track options. And then I have negative 10 here because first let's look at my side chain. So on shaper box here, I have it a little bit of a like a, an attack so that I don't get like a click. So I have a 3.51 millisecond attack. So we don't get any kind of click or weird artifacts. And then I added another 10 seconds negative. So we, so we don't get an attack, but it also adds a little bit of, it's like a, I think it's a virtual riot trick where like you add a little bit of, and maybe other people do it too, but there's like a little bit of silence right before the kick and the snare so that it like hits a little bit harder. So you can see that here. So there should be about five milliseconds right here. So it says, 
there's actually seven milliseconds because you can see on this track, it should be going up here. This is the base. It should be going up and then back down. And then it just flattens out here. So this is where the silence is. And it's only six or seven milliseconds. So it's not noticeable, but it adds just that little bit so that the kick like in the snare hits a little bit harder. So that's method one. Uh, similarly, if you want to use audio instead of MIDI, sometimes I like to use audio. Um, here's how you can do it. So we'll collapse this, turn this off. So we've got a kick and snare here. You could actually separate these two into kick and snare. So let's just say like the snares are going to be down here. And then we would make this a group. And this would just be kick snare audio. And then I have this other trigger track that I made. So we have these CV devices. All right. And so if you go into packs on the left, if you have, I think if you have suite, I think you have to have suite. Um, so I hate, I, I hope this doesn't exclude anyone watching this. Um, but if you go into packs, it'll say like 50 available packs right now. There's one called CV tools. Just download that one and install it. Okay. And then what you do is you you just search CV, and then what you want is you want the CV envelope follower and then CVN, and that's what these two are. And so what these what these are going to do is it's going to track the signal coming in as audio, and then it's going to trigger something as MIDI, and then we're going to send that MIDI out into the trigger track, and then that's going to trigger your sidechain. So you still won't have to worry about making like a MIDI track. It, it will all just be like on its own. It'll just take whatever audio, it'll turn it into MIDI, and then it will trigger your sidechain. So we need to set this to CV to uh, kick snare audio, right? It's going to be the same track. You want it to be the same track. Sorry if I'm sounding like I'm like confused myself. Um, and then we're going to do five and six CVN. Okay. We're going to set the min to zero, the max to should be a hundred percent, I think. And then uh, I have the gain turned down. I don't think you need to turn the gain down. You set the mode to trigger, right? And then you can set the threshold however you want. We just need to like solo this. What's going on here? Oh. Okay. So see, it's like, it's, it's triggering every time. And you can set the threshold to whatever you want. It, as long as it's just triggering when the snare and the kick hit once. So that's happening twice. I don't like that. Okay, so we're cool there. Then on the CVN, you are going to take the CV from the kick snare audio like we just had and then 5-6 CV envelope follower. Okay, you're going to set the mode to DC, polarity to uni, um, and then the range, I uh, don't think it really matters, honestly. Um, and then you can see that it's like giving us like a full trigger every time. Then on the right here, it's usually collapsed, but you're going to hit this arrow here and you're going to select the MIDI is going to go to your trigger track. And for this one, it's the other trigger, right? And then track in and it's by default, it's going to be set to low C3, high C4. That's fine. We're going to fix. Uh, there's a little bit of an issue with that. Um, that I figured out a way around. Uh, I set the velocity to 100. It's already to, and then I set the length to one so that it's not like a long note. It's just like a short tick. So that's all we need for this. Then you're going to go to your other trigger track, the, the main trigger track. You're going to get a, a MIDI device, all right? Search MIDI, and then you're going to grab a pitch device. It should be in your MIDI effects. And you're going to grab the pitch device. You're going to drag it on this track. I'm going to close down this operator because I don't need that right now. Um, and then you're going to set the lowest to C4. As long as you have everything set up the way, because we want to limit it, what it's going to do is it's going to try, if I turn this off, right? And we go ahead and we just like, let's record on this track. If I record this, 
it's sending two notes. It's sending a C4 and then it's sending a C3 for some reason. I don't know why. Um, so we have to limit what is going to be sent back out. Okay, so we're we're track in, and then this is going to be sent to side chain, and then the shaper box, just like this one was. So I'm hoping this is making sense. I'll start back here. So we've got the CV envelope follower and the CVN. If you need to like go backwards and and go through how I made all this happen, that's fine. We have our audio going into there. It's going to trigger this. It's going to send the MIDI to the trigger track. And then you have this pitch and you have the lowest set to C4 and that's going to block any other signal below that. So this is the lowest note and then it's going to send out C4 to the side chain. And I have this trigger, uh, this, this trigger track set to negative 20 milliseconds because for some reason there's latency with these, uh, the CV things. So we're still going to get the same result. I, I did a little bit of like experimentation. Negative 20 milliseconds still gives us that little bit of silence. And you don't have to do that, but it gives us a little bit of silence right before. Um, so if I were to resample this again, let's unsolo that. I think we've got everything set up right. Oh, wait. We're missing something. Oh, I know what happened. Okay, it's because I have this operator on here. So this operator was going to be the click for the next for the next method that I was going to use. So, yeah, we'll just delete that for now and now it should work. We're going to send this out to Shaperbox. Okay, now it's working. Here we go. Okay, so now if we look at this, we should have that silence right before the kick and the snare. Let's see here, right here. Oh yeah, big boy. Oh yeah, that's like 13 milliseconds of silence. So you could actually do less here. You could probably do like, you could probably do negative 10 and it would probably work the same. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, so we have a little bit of silence here. It's like three milliseconds, four or five maybe. Yeah, four milliseconds of silence right here. So that is method two. If you want to have audio for your kick and snare and you still want to use something like Shaperbox or Duck Buddy or something like that uh, and send a MIDI signal out without having to actually write MIDI notes and change those and monitor that like as you're writing. So I put the operator back on that track that we were just working with. So let's say that we're doing the same thing. We're using this audio and then we're going to send the MIDI signal out to the other trigger. And then we have an operator here. And what this operator does is it has a click sound. That's all it is. I made it like the shortest attack and decay possible. So like the decay is one millisecond. The release is one millisecond. And so it just sounds like a click. So that's the trigger. It's just a click. Okay. And so here in the side chain, this is if you don't have Shaperbox. So if you don't have Shaperbox or anything like that, we're going to do just the built-in compressor in Ableton. So you open it up and it's like this, and then you hit the, hit the arrow down, you hit side chain, and then the audio is going to be from the other trigger channel. Okay, post effects, not post mixer, post effects. We're going to turn this off because I don't think, I don't think we need it to be on. And then this should start ducking everything that way. And you can see it now. It's working. Okay. You can't hear it. But let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and play everything. So we've got our kick and snare group, right? The other trigger is going into the side chain. And then the side green side chain group is on. Right. And let's go ahead and record this. <laughs> Okay, and let's see if we get the little silence. Yep, see right here? It's quite a bit, actually. Now, you are going to get a little click here, just a little bit. So if I solo this bass track, you can hear the click a little bit. Okay. 
It's like not as bad as it used to be, I feel like, but it's still there. But if you don't have Duck Buddy or Kickstart or LFO Tool or Shaperbox or anything like that, this is a pretty easy fix for you. Um, and uh, a couple little things. Once you have everything set up in the compressor, it's set to log mode, which is quite a bit slower. And I think you don't get the click. Now you still get a little bit of a click, but you can't really get the release time. Like I like a shorter release time. Um, I like a little bit more of a, like a transparent, not so destructive uh, side chain. So what, what a couple of things that I would do, I would set it to linear and then I would set the look ahead time to 10 milliseconds. Um, and that will help you get that little bit of silence right before your kick and snare. Um, and I set like a pretty high knee and then I set my release, my attack all the way down. I set my ratio all the way up, threshold all the way down. And then the release is 10 milliseconds. And that's just how I liked it. You can do it to taste however you want it, if you want it pumpier or whatever. But the point of all this is mostly to just get the audio to trigger something to trigger the sidechain. And then again, you can go back to doing MIDI drums, right? And do it the same way. You can send this MIDI to the other trigger, right? And you can just go kick snare, post effects, and then that can go into the operator. You can turn this pitch thing off. You don't need the pitch thing, right? And then that should go into the side chain again. I'm pretty sure. Let's see. Let's see if this works. Yeah. Okay, and let's take a look here. Yep, still works. All right, we still we're still getting some silence here and so you don't really need as much of a track delay here if you wanted to just make it like negative five or something that could probably work too i don't know if this helps you at all but uh i definitely am feeling a lot better about not having to constantly edit my trigger track for my sidechain i kind of like to just set it and forget it i'll go ahead and make this template available on my patreon and if you want to use audio, if you want to use MIDI, whatever you don't want to use, you can just get rid of and then just resave it as your own template. But yeah, that's all for this one. I hope I maybe helped somebody and uh, I will see you next time. Bye. Have a great time.